Our topic for this session will be renal trauma. Our first case is an extensive renal laceration. You see superiorly the left superior kidney is fragmented and there's a great deal of heterogeneous perinephric fluid present. On the next cut down you can see a large amount of heterogeneous fluid occupying the left renal fossa and you can see the disrupted ends of the distal left renal vein and left renal artery both seen here. There are also regions of extravasation emanating from those disrupted vascular ends. Yet more inferiorly, you can see an anteriorly displaced, devascularized, hypodense left inferior kidney. Essentially, this is a renal transection both through the left renal vessels, but also through the mid portion of the renal parenchyma. Inferiorly and posteriorly, you can see the inferior extent of the active extravasation emanating from those torn vessels. There is the vascular portion of the superior kidney. Here are the torn vascular ends, and you can follow that active extravasation inferiorly in the left renal fossa. So that is an extensive renal laceration, effectively a transection of the left kidney with lacerations of the left renal vein and left renal artery. Our next case, a familiar one, a classic collecting system laceration. Of course, we all know you have to wait for the delayed and excretory phase images to exclude this particular injury. So you see on the initial corticomedullary phase, there is a devascularized hypodense non-enhancing segment in the medial posterior right kidney. On the later medullary phase, that persists. And only on the delayed excretory phase images do we finally see excreted contrast spilling from the lacerated collecting system. So here they are on cine, that's the corticomedullary phase. And now the medullary phase. And that contrast excretion only apparent on the latest of the phases. So that is a collecting system laceration. Our next case is a variation of that. This is arterial hemorrhage into the collecting system. So a different thing altogether, but similar in appearance. You can see there is perinephric extravasation consistent with a laceration, and there's a good deal of right perinephric fluid. But note also, there is a hyperdense focus within the collecting system of the right kidney, yet the kidneys are not in the excretory phase. So that suggests that this hemorrhage is coming from an arterial source. There is contrast within the right ureter as well, and there is a great deal of periureteral fluid, and there is dependent contrast within the bladder. So here on the cine, you can appreciate again that hyperdense contrast within the collecting system of the right kidney in a kidney that is in the corticomedullary enhancement phase. Here we see the right ureteral and bladder contrast. So this was angiographically confirmed an arterial hemorrhage related to a renal laceration uh, with hemorrhage directly into the right renal collecting system. Our next case is a renal arteriovenous fistula related to a gunshot wound, as so many of these injuries are. You can see these small metallic bullet fragments lying along the tract of the bullet, which passes across the anterior aspect of the right kidney. You can also appreciate the right renal venous enhancement pattern present here 
and compare that to the absence of any nephrogram in the left kidney. This is an early arterial phase scan, and so it's the left kidney here that is normal. On a lower cut, you can again appreciate that right renal venous enhancement pattern, and here is the actual scene of the crime. To the left of the arrow, you can see the enhancing stump of the right renal artery. At the tip of the arrow, that contrast column is converting to a right renal venous enhancement with retrograde enhancement of the right uh, renal veins. So here we can appreciate that right renal venous enhancement pattern. And here, that rapid transition point between artery and vein. So that is a right renal arteriovenous fistula related to a gunshot wound. Our next case is the traumatic rupture of a benign renal cyst. I'm actually surprised we don't see this more often given the frequency of renal cysts. However, it is a relatively unusual finding. You can see here relatively hypodense fluid in the left perinephric space and the flaccid, collapsed, thin wall of a benign renal cyst. Those are best appreciated here on the video, where you can see the collapsed walls of that cyst. And we'll look at that one more time without the annotation. And that is a traumatic left renal cyst rupture. Our next case is a horseshoe kidney with laceration of its parenchymal isthmus. This, of course, is the dreaded trauma complication of a horseshoe kidney. You can see the irregular sheared aspect of the inferior right kidney here with a large amount of perinephric fluid. On a lower cut, the horseshoe kidney is much more apparent. That left kidney got a greater share of the parenchymal isthmus that you see sheared here. Note the blush of density along that irregular surface. That is a common finding in sheared parenchymal organs. What that represents are small fragments of parenchyma that maintain their vascular connections, and it does not represent active extravasation. We see more density adjacent, consistent with clot formation here in this large perinephric fluid collection. This is probably better appreciated on the coronal where you see the irregular sheared aspects of that parenchymal isthmus and a large internephric fluid collection with clot. There is that sheared surface of the inferior right kidney and that of the left. Note again that blush of density along those irregular surfaces. And we'll have one more look at it on the coronal. So that is a horseshoe kidney with laceration of its parenchymal isthmus. Our next case is a case of prune belly with dilated obstructed kidneys and an associated laceration. We'll start with the uninjured right kidney, which you can see has a markedly dilated collecting system and just a bare wisp of remaining atrophied surrounding renal parenchyma consistent with long-standing obstruction. In the left kidney, you can see similar but less pronounced changes with a dilated collecting system and atrophied parenchyma but there is also a through and through defect of that atrophied left renal parenchyma with hyperdensity consistent with hemorrhage and clot. Farther down, you can appreciate dilation, marked dilation of both ureters and a distended, lobulated, and irregularly thickened bladder. Note also the near complete absence of anterior abdominal wall musculature essentially diagnostic of prune belly syndrome. So let's first view the uninjured right kidney with its markedly dilated collecting system and chronically atrophied parenchyma. And you can appreciate that lobulated, thick-walled, 
dilated bladder. And here we go back up through the absent abdominal wall musculature. And last, we will appreciate the atrophied parenchyma of the left kidney with that through and through defect and a great deal of hyperdensity consistent with hemorrhage and clot. So that is a case of prune belly syndrome with an associated laceration. Well, this is a common phenomenon, in fact, also demonstrated by our next case, a congenital UPJO, ureteral pelvic junction obstruction, with an associated laceration. You can see again a chronically obstructed and thus dilated collecting system with a bare remnant of linear enhancing compressed and atrophied renal parenchyma. These dilated collecting systems become extremely friable and susceptible to laceration. You can see a great deal of perinephric fluid and collecting system density consistent with hemorrhage. There are small defects throughout this dilated kidney, which you'll see here on the video. You can appreciate a small defect right here in the posterior aspect of the kidney. That is most likely where the laceration originates. This patient was kicked by a horse, in which Ian Fleming once wrote, are dangerous at both ends and uncomfortable in the middle. It is worth noting uh, there is very little soft tissue swelling or stranding, so it suggests it didn't take all that powerful a blow to cause this degree of injury. And that concludes this session on renal trauma.